Welcome! We are breaking down on some pretty good volume here in the S&P 500, but where we sit right now is at what we potentially could see a pivotal point. And this is a pivotal point based off of the volume profile. In this video, we're going to cover exactly what that means, what's you watching for going forward, and then we're going to cover a bunch of charts towards the end that you have requested in prior videos. So, like always, platform we're using right now is TradingView. You can pair this up with Lux, Algo, and any of the other resources linked up down below this video if you want to check that out. Also, leave your chart requests in the comments. Please, please, please. We highly recommend that. That's how we keep this thing interesting. Okay, so here's the S&P 500, and we last talked, and the S&P was somewhere around here, right? But what we did was get a slight bounce. We actually undercut these lows slight bounce and then we ended up sending it to the downside and now we had two nice red days in a row of pretty clean downside action falling right into this volume though we know we've talked about this volume note a couple of times over the past couple of months or weeks as a potential area if we're looking for a uh, shelf for a bounce uh, for the s p as it would make a lot of logical sense now we are sitting right here why it was an area of consolidation right here, area of consolidation right here, and even go back all the way to May 2022. It's the same exact level. If you bring the screen across, it's the same exact level. So that equates to a very high area, or at least price zone, uh, where a lot of volume has been exchanged. And that's why we have that volume profile on the right-hand side. This is the visible range volume profile on TradingView. I believe uh, you'll have to have one of the upgraded accounts, not a free account, to have the volume profile visible. Uh, as of last check, that's the case, uh, in case you're wondering how we have it shown. That said, we have some pretty big catalysts lined up. We actually just got Amazon earnings. We'll cover Amazon's chart in a second. PCE data comes out Friday morning. So literally 12 hours roughly from when this video goes live, we've got PCE data coming out, which is going to be a pretty big piece to the inflation puzzle and ideally a market mover. Uh, so we are watching that closely inside of a pretty nice momentum to the downside move we are seeing right now. But, 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 but what else is going on? That's what we're going to cover next. Next, let's cover the 10-year. The 10-year actually... Had a pretty nice rejection day here. It tried to get back up, looked like, uh oh, this morning it was going to push up towards those highs and then fell back off. Currently sits just under 4.85 on the 10 year. Again, uptrending in toe prove otherwise. We can start to maybe question that uptrend if it breaks back under this 4.8 because you could then make the argument of like, okay, we technically have a lower high here. And if we put, okay, cool. That's potentially a catalyst tomorrow to watch based off PCE data. That could be telling. So there's that. There's also the dollar, which is technically speaking, it wasn't a downtrend, which is now trying to break the downtrend. And uh, as we saw it make these lower lows, it's trying to break out of the lower high range, which is somewhat concerning if you are long gold and silver, dare we say Bitcoin, that seems to be kind of pulling itself away from these correlations, but we'll see. And the VIX is up over 20. The VIX has actually been grinding back up and now it's actually starting to hold up over 20, which is a, I'll say a good sign. Uh, it's a sign that we've got more volatility and that the short side uh, of the trade uh, seems to be where you'd want to be until that falls back under 20, okay? So all these signs don't look great based on what we've been seeing. Uh, the 10 year, I guess if it breaks down, could be good. But they don't look great. The 10 year is still relatively really high for what we've seen the past decade plus. So it's, you know, it's all, it comes with a grain of salt. Now, we just got Amazon earnings. Had a couple earnings this week, uh, notable stocks. Amazon earnings, let's take a peek at how this is reacting. Let's go to a 30 minute chart here in the after hours on Thursday. Initial reaction was positive uh, as Amazon popped up to about 126.50. But as we speak right now, Amazon looks, oh man, that's looking pretty nasty. If it breaks down under 118, not a good look. It looks like it's starting to get ready to break down for uh, push lower. We'll see what happens. Again, this could be a pretty volatile play overnight, but not the best of looks giving back the gains off the initial reaction, but still holding low of day. We shall see. 
on top of Amazon, we've had, we've got to pull up QQQ, which is kind of a collection of some of the tech stocks that have been reporting earnings these past couple of days. And what you'll notice on QQQ is a, a lot, a lot farther to go to get to that high volume node. And when the chart resets here, give it a second, when the volume profile resets, that volume node that we are kind of looking at on the S&P, which is like down here, we still have a ways to go on QQQ. Like we are currently sitting right at that on the S&P, but on QQQ, we're about seven and a half percent away or seven, seven ish percent away from that level, which is pretty, that's a, that's a big move. We are now in correction territory. If you were to go by the definitions of corrections and bull markets, because technically speaking, we are in a bull market or we were in a bull market, right? From the lows we made late last year into the highs we saw in the summertime, you know, go to those highs to now, right? You're down over 10%. That's technically corrective territory now on the S and on the NASDAQ. So, you know, you're into territory that is starting to get a little bit concerning. And if you were to pull the S&P up, we are down approximately 10, a little over 10. So you're in corrective territory on the S&P as well. So, you know, things are kind of getting a little you know, sketchy. However, if it is a bull market, then these are potentially good opportunities to be buying bigger picture and zoom things out. And, and if you can kind of get past that. Now, this is the time of year that we kind of see this volatility. The next two months are historically and seasonality wise, very strong, kind of just stronger months, November and December, in terms of we tend to see more positive months, uh, more positive days than negative. Net on the S&P 500. We'll see if that ends up holding up and holding true. Okay. I do want to touch on Bitcoin quick because last we talked, we're talking about a potential breakout and we got the breakout. Bitcoin is now, has you know, you can say it has now broken out, okay, over this 31,000 range. Now, the question is, can it tag this level? It is now in consolidation right here, up around 34, 35K. The next level I'll be watching is 37.5, roughly 38,000. That'll be the spot to watch based off of a prior eh, small little volume node and prior consolidation before the big move down. That's what I've been interested in. Either way, the breakout is occurring. It's we're in the middle of the, or we're above the breakout zone. If Bitcoin starts to fall back off, not the best of looks, but could easily, you know, just go to higher low and potentially push higher from there. Watching that one closely, of course. Okay. Some other chart requests. One chart request we got was for gold. Let's pull up gold. Gold's chart, let's see. With the dollar we were showing before showing strength, it kind of has you a little bit concerned about gold, but guess what? Gold is looking quite strong, quite strong, despite the US dollar also looking quite strong. So that's a really good look. If the dollar was to weaken, that would be, you know, I would say a big tailwind for gold. So gold does look pretty good. Gold based off the volume profile here, if it can stay up above, you know, 1925, uh, 1900 would be the levels to watch on gold. If it can get there in the next, man, next spot, man, it's up here over 20K, over, sorry, not 20K, over 2000. And that's going to be an all-time high if it can tag that blue line, which would be like right up around here. It would be interesting if it can get there, but still got a ways to go. It does look good. Okay, breaking some of the lower highs, breaking that trend. Now you're in consolidation. Want to see a break of consolidation and a continued move higher for gold, which would be very healthy. And that does look pretty good. It does look pretty good. Okay. Next chart request is AXP American Express. Let's pull this bad boy up. We have recently had earnings here, uh, which was kind of a gap down. And so pressure to the downside as we speak. Bigger picture, if you look at American Express, you know, you're coming down to some of the lower levels that we've seen since the bear market began in 2022. And really, you know, you go to the weekly chart, it's more of a consolidation area. And honestly, there's going to be a lot of, this is an area of, of, I would say, high interest on American Express as we're just starting to get into that. Why? Because it was the pre-pandemic highs and it was also the lows of the bear market. So that's interesting. Now, bigger picture, volume profile wise, you know, you've got just a lot to grind through up to about 178 from like 150 area. Like this is a lot to kind of grind through, a lot of consolidation, but it's down towards the lows. It does it look the best on the daily charts and stuff. No, not necessarily. But when you broaden it out, like it's coming down to a spot that I, you know, it's tough to look at that and say short, 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 short. 
based off of what it's done at this level the past you know year and a half. So watching that one closely, I'd say this is going to be a key level to see how it reacts here. Ideally, you'd want to see it start to break out of this downtrend, if you will. So getting back up over 156 would be a good look on AXP. HPQ, next chart to pull up. This, to me, looks like you've got a bear flag setting up. Uh, you kind of have, you know, this, this, as we say, a bear flag of a move down, and then you're in this kind of consolidation flag, and then you're looking for the next leg down. So they've got earnings coming up in a couple of weeks, about a month out. So still got some time there. But based off of everything that we've seen here, you know, you have had a pretty big move down, and then you had a very long and drawn out kind of cons slowly uptrending consolidation that has then been kind of broken. Because if you kind of, if you were to draw these lines like roughly in, you'd get something that looks like this, you know, where you had the, the move down and you're kind of in this consolidation and you're breaking down that consolidation. And you have even like a smaller scale of that happening inside of this move by itself here as well. So does not look the best. Uh, we'll say that, but if we can get above this 2725, that's a good sign. Uh, and there's a small gap to fill up here towards 2830 that we can see right there based off of, uh, what was that? Uh, back in September. And then if it does break down below these lows, I would look at the targets down to the lows of this bear market of last year. So October, so you're talking 2450 down to about 24 will be an area of high interest on HPQ if we are to continue to break down further from here. See if that happens, no guarantees, but based off the volume profile, you also have got a scenario where like it's going to be tough to get back over 29, 30 bucks. Like 30 bucks is going to be a pretty big wall on HPQ. So that's like a, from a bigger picture perspective, like that is a spot to watch. PayPal, another one to watch. PayPal has been tough, man. It, it's not um, a stock that I think a lot of people, you know, are looking at and, and are really excited about right now just because of how tough it's been if you have been a PayPal investor or trying to time the bottom, which it's like, okay, good luck with that. Uh, earnings coming out here in a couple of, it's November 1st, that's next week. So earnings coming out fairly soon. We talked about PayPal and you brought it out. It's just right now and it's, it's, it's an ex extension to the downside. Like it is just breaking down out of, if you want to call it this consolidation, cool. It's just breaking that consolidation, looking for the next leg down. Earnings coming up, wouldn't be surprised to see continued pressure into earnings unless the market were to bounce substantially. The next spot of interest is like 44 bucks um, that we have in mind. Uh, that was a prior high here and a prior, you know, pretty substantial breakout point to the upside back in 2016, 2017. But if earnings, you know, earnings is, I don't want to say a crapshoot, but like, you know, it really, who knows? Like earnings could, the reaction to earnings could be, you know, very, very telling. What I will say though, is that going into earnings, you have momentum to the downside. So at a minimum, you have momentum to the downside. You have so far on this week, you've got a higher volume week than the past like five, six weeks, maybe more uh, already. And it's only Thursday. There's still technically one more day to go inside of this weekly volume candle on the bottom right here. So that's already telling you that we've got some pretty, pretty steady pressure on PayPal to the downside. That right there, guys, is today's video. I'll leave links to TradingView, Lux Algo, and all other resources below this video. Also, leave your chart requests in the comments. Thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.